So you're thinking about buying a home in South Carolina. That's awesome, I recommend it. But there are some easy mistakes that you can make when you're shopping for your home that can cost you big if you're not careful. Stay tuned to learn what these mistakes are and how you can prevent them. Hey, what's up y'all, it's Sean, your Charleston Realtor. I've had friends get burned because they didn't verify crucial information before buying a home. My goal is to help you prevent these mistakes. So let's get to it. First, let's talk about flood zones. Now, I'm in Charleston and the flood maps are pretty wonky and all over the place due to the proximity of the Atlantic Ocean and multiple rivers that flow to it. There's some neighborhoods that are in flood zones and then there's some that aren't. The flood zone lines get redrawn every five years by FEMA and you can easily check the address to see if it is in a flood zone. So what type of flood zones are there? Well, FEMA has a whole bunch, but the primary ones you'll see here are the X and the AE. When you see X, that means you're not in a flood zone, or at least FEMA has determined that area will flood only once every 500 years. For all intents and purposes, the AE designation is a flood zone, though FEMA defines it a little differently. So the big picture is zone X is not a flood zone and won't require flood insurance, while zone AE is a flood zone and you will require flood insurance. So you might be asking, so what? Well, here's how you get burned. Remember when I said the lines get redrawn every five years? Well, sometimes the homeowner is selling their home they've owned for a long time. When they bought the home, they didn't require flood insurance and maybe they don't know they need it now. So now when you and your realtor are looking to buy the home, you notice that flood insurance is not attached to the property per the seller's disclosure. And you don't do your due diligence and to realize that it should be. Now you get the house under contract, you pay for inspections, and you might even start measuring the living room to see where your couch is gonna go. But then your lender comes back to you and says, hey, you need flood insurance. And that's an extra thousand or two thousand dollars each year. Worst case scenario, you can no longer afford that home anymore and you fall, fall out of escrow. And this happens more than you think. I've seen times where a flood zone barely clips a home or even a property line and now you have to get flood insurance. Take for instance this example. This is part of the floodplain map in downtown Charleston. The blue is zone AE and that orange is zone X. You see this house here where the flood zone just barely touches the house? Well, that's how arbitrary all of this is. These zones aren't drawn with respect to street boundaries or anything. Lenders will see this home and say that it requires flood insurance while the other homes literally right next to it do not. So how else can you get burned in a flood zone? Well, say you're an investor and you see a golden opportunity to take a dump of a property and renovate it to make it gorgeous. There's tons of houses like this on the Charleston Peninsula, by the way. But some municipalities, like Charleston, require you to bring the elevation of the house up to a certain point above the base floodplain if you're putting more than 50% of the purchase price in renovations. Now, I know that was a mouthful. In other words, an extensive rehab will also require you to meet the FEMA guidelines. So what does that mean? Well, you can't do a complete gut job of many homes without physically raising the home by several feet. Like you literally need to lift the house up and create a new foundation for it. It's this reason why a lot of old abandoned properties exist in downtown Charleston. The sellers don't have the financial means to renovate it themselves, and any buyer will have to meet that FEMA elevation requirements, which makes it cost prohibitive to do so. It sort of sucks for everyone. Next, the second mistake I see people make is not taking termites seriously. Now, termites are a huge concern here in the American South. There's a couple of species here in South Carolina, and they tend to swarm in the spring and early summer. Make no mistake. Read my lips. Termites can wreck homes and structures. Last year, I saw a $650,000 house in West Ashley fall out of contract and have a $300,000 price reduction because termites ate away most of the foundation. The owners weren't even aware of it. I had sellers this year find out they had termites during the buyer's inspections and it cost them almost $6,000 to fix. There is one solution to this problem. You see, homeowner's insurance will not cover termite damage. You need a separate policy for that and we call that a termite bond. Local pest control services will use chemicals and bait to create a protective barrier around the house in order to prevent termite damage. If there are termites present, the company will come back out to treat. And if there's damage, you're protected. The company will also fix damage caused by termites as long as you get that termite repair bond. So here's how you get burned by termites. As a buyer, you're entitled to a termite inspection. Usually this is one of your three standard contingencies that's written into the residential purchase agreement. If it comes back that there's termite damage, the seller is usually obligated to repair that damage or you can terminate the contract and receive your full earnest money back. But where so many buyers go wrong is actually after the home closes. They forget to transfer the termite bond into their name or they don't wanna pay that renewal fee when it comes due. By the way, this renewal fee for almost all homes is anywhere from three to $500. And when that termite bond lapses, it's usually anywhere from $800 to $3,000 
to start the bond anew. It just depends on the size of the house. So really, when it comes down to it, casual indifference to termites plus the cost of maintaining the bond creates this perfect storm where many homeowners forgo their termite protection and it can come back to bite you big time. Now the third and final mistake I see people make is not considering location well enough. People fall in love with a home, whether it's because of its size or its condition, its price, or even the neighborhood amenities. But at the end of the day, the three rules of real estate remain. That is location, location, and location. This is how I see this mistake pan out. Now in Charleston, for instance, there's a ton of new construction neighborhoods on the outskirts of town. And because it's so far removed from the rest of the metro, prices are a little cheaper. You can get the most bang for your buck out here. This is great for many people, but what if a member of the household works across town? That could be a 45 to 90 minute commute depending on the traffic. Maybe it's best to choose a more central location instead of that remote location. And let's talk about traffic by the way. Many home shoppers are looking at homes on the weekends when there's no traffic. Or they might be deciding between two homes in the evening, again when their maps don't accurately reflect rush hour traffic. It's super important to look at traffic patterns during the 8 a.m. and the 4 p.m. rush hours. Better yet, try to meet a couple neighbors who have similar commutes. And the last factor of location is resale value. Statistically speaking, there's only a 50% chance that you'll actually own your home 13 years from now. And many people are gonna move well before then. Certain aspects of a home's location elevate its value, such as a floor plan, school districts, crime, or even whether or not the neighborhood is, has an HOA. Is it on the outskirts of town or is it closer to the city where space is limited and new construction isn't prevalent? These are all things to consider when you're thinking about buying your home, because unless it's your forever home, you will be selling one day. So those are three mistakes I see people make all the time when buying a home in South Carolina. If you think I left something out, be sure you let me know in the comments below and be sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.